All right, we're back with more. Bob Pompey and Andrew Filipponi are right here on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. All right, so Andrew, I think if the Steelers are serious about this quarterback situation, regardless of, regardless of having Trubisky here, if they really believe it, then they should go after it. And that is move up if need be to get who they want, as opposed to sitting there at 20 waiting for somebody else who may not be the guy they want. If they've designated one of these quarterbacks as the guy they really want, then go after him. Or would you just sit there? Or what would you do uh, if you wanted one of these guys? Not guaranteed that any of them will be where you want them to be. Well, I think Pickett's going to be really good. I think that the Panthers at six are really hot to trot for him, even though they've been at all these quarterback workouts too. Although they skipped Desmond Ritter, which I thought was interesting. The Steelers are one of only three teams that had Mike Tomlin and Kevin Colbert uh, GM and coach combination at the Ritter workout today at Cincinnati. So that tells you a lot. Mike Tomlin picked up. I've been at Jeff Ruby's Steakhouse. That's a huge bill that he picked up last night for Ritter. Okay, you spending that kind of money for a smoke screen? I don't know about that, Bob. Chicken oh, they, wings they are one guys thing. All Jeff the time, Ruby's. Though, Andrew, they spend a lot of money in that sort of stuff. Well, they're so. driving to these places, though. I, I was surprised by that. Where's the private jet? Good Very question. surprised by that. <laughs> um, you know, I think it all depends here. Like, you'd have to move up to five, maybe, to get Pickett, Leapfrog, Carolina. How about if We're they like about, Willis? Well, I mean, you might have to move up 10 spots to get him. You know, maybe you got to jump in front of Atlanta or Seattle or uh, Washington or one of those teams to get him. You know, I had an NFL, uh, someone who worked for an NFL team, not now, but previously, still very active in the NFL, tell me today, he thinks the Steelers might trade their second round pick and next year's second round pick to move back into the first round and take a quarterback there in the late 20s. You know, he, I guess that's what the Ravens did to get Lamar Jackson, Bob, a few years ago. They made a second first round pick. He was the 32nd pick. So in that case, how would you feel if they took Corral like 28th? Well, wait, wait. Or the, Ritter let me, 28th? Let me get this straight. You're saying they take their pick at 20 and pick whatever they want. Yeah. And then trade this year's this number year's two second and next year's and next number year two to second. move up. Is that what yes. you're saying? So they get the fifth-year option on the quarterback okay. there instead yeah. of – what do you make of that move? Well, it, again, it has to be the quarterback you want. If you're just taking a quarterback and he's not the quarterback, then I wouldn't do that. I'd go after the quarterback who they determine is that guy. You can't do all of this and, and just say, well, we'll take whoever falls to us because that's the wrong way of doing it, I think. If not, stick to Drubisky, load up on everything else, and, and uh, readdress this next year. So we got a lot of people want to talk about it. Andrew, let's get right to it, beginning with uh, Bert, who's on line two. Hey, Bert. Hey, Bert. Guys, thanks. Yeah, I, I've uh, done my Lindy's research, and I like Alec Pierce, the receiver from Cincinnati in the first round. He looks like uh, Smith Schuster with uh, deep speed. Second round, I like a sleeper pick. Uh, Nick Ford, this power center from Utah, he kind of looks a little bit like Josh Myers, who I think you liked last year, Bob. But in the third and fourth round, you need a couple more linemen. I hope they can sign another uh, lineman, either a guard or a defensive tackle, and uh, Get another uh, cornerback and sign up uh, Edmonds, and uh, that should do it, hopefully. Thanks, Bert. For the next year, the Steelers only have six picks, as pointed out by Mark Caboli today. You know, Andrew, I think they're going to drive uh, take a receiver at some point. I just don't think it'll be in the first round. Well, they haven't looked at the first-round receivers. Colbert and Tomlin skipped Ohio State and Penn State. But they had people you know, that's there, That's Olave and Wilson. Yeah, but you know the stat. Their first-round pick, Tomlin and Colbert, always go to the pro day. Always. Without fail. But they do so have they people skipped there. A lot of... so. Well, then let me ask you this question. Why wouldn't they go to Penn State instead of Cincinnati then today? That's what they always do. Support the in-state schools. Send Tomlin and Colbert there then. Well, they've done things differently this offseason, so who knows? They have a different strategy going on. I mean, Bob, let me just pin you down on this. Do you think they're serious about taking a quarterback in the first round? I think they're as serious as a heart attack about it. I know me. I don't like to work for nothing. I don't like to work 20 hours a day and get no payoff. Tomlin and Colbert are doing this crazy odyssey, this wild itinerary, and it's all about first-round graded quarterbacks. Why would they do that if they're not interested? They're not. I, to me, it's not a smokescreen. There's no point to a smokescreen unless you're picking mm. like fifth 
or 10th, and you or, want to fool people Or if they know exactly there. who they're going to get, because based on what they believe he'll be there, they're looking at other options for after this. Uh, listen, if it's true that you believe, and I understand it, that they're all scouting these guys because they are serious about taking a pick, then my point would be you don't stay at 20. If whoever it is you're looking for, let's say it's Willis, and let's say you have to move up, then you make an active move to do it to make sure you get him. Otherwise, this is all not worth it. So you don't just wait at 20 and expect somebody to drop to you. If so, it may be the wrong guy dropping to you. Well, That's all. But, I, I, but I would say to combat that, I think, you know, they might also like the defensive players at Georgia. And so there's they a lot might of be them. Content to, <laughs> well, right. So they might be content to stay at 20 and say, if a quarterback gets to us at 20, we'll take him. If he doesn't, we'll take one of those defensive players. I mean, I think that that might be uh, a, a possibility, too. Yeah. I mean, isn't it obvious that outside of Pickett, there's really not a great quarterback prospect in this class? Yeah, it's not Bail strong by comparison, not at all. So, you know, and, and again, I think a Willis is here for, he's going to be in the uh, Trey Lance and, mold, which is to wait a year and then we'll see. So, And I think the money they gave the Trubisky leaves this open. You know, sure. they didn't pay him like a starting quarterback. So that's why I think they're still in the market for one in the draft. Let's go to Ed and Carrick on line one. Hello, Ed. Welcome to the sports call. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Hi, Phil. Hey, Ed. Hey, uh, Phil, I got a question for you. I went down to the casino today. I bet 5000 on the Pirates to go over 62 and a half. You think that's a good bet? 5000 They won They won 61 last year. I think they're going to trade Reynolds. So, hmm. man, I think you're cutting it real close there, Phil. <laughs> well, they certainly are not off to a good I, start with this rental situation, quibbling over a uh, six to seven hundred thousand dollars on your best player, and, and in the process, I think they know that because him, he won't be here three months from now. Yeah, I think that's why they're playing just hardball optics. with him. Andrew, this whole thing is optics. It's been this way forever. Just you're talking about a handful of change, basically, for these guys. You know, come on, is it really worth it? Yeah, on but that? you know, well, I, I agree with you to some extent, but if you knew that a guy wasn't going to work for you for very long, why would you give them a raise if you could prevent it? I mean, that's, I think, their logic here. My, my, my takeaway from the way they've handled this, handled this Reynolds situation is that it became increasingly obvious that they don't look at him as an Andrew McCutcheon type face of the franchise. We're going to build around this guy. They look at him more as a trade chip and, and as a commodity than they do a linchpin foundational player. Because I disagree. Because I think if they felt like he was... Well, then here's okay, why I disagree. But, they don't look at him like Andrew McCutcheon because he's not willing to take an Andrew McCutcheon six year, $51 million franchise friendly deal. That's why they're not looking at him. 